There is one place in the solar system where life might actually exist beyond Earth. And no, it's not Mars. It's a frozen moon of Jupiter called Europa. Beneath its icy surface lies an entire ocean, one with the potential to harbor alien life forms. But there's a problem. Getting there is one of the greatest challenges in space exploration. Even with all our modern technology, sending humans to Europa seems almost impossible. But why? And what exactly makes this place so special? Europa is one of Jupiter's four largest moons, known as the Galilean moons, a name that honors their discoverer, Galileo Galilei. In 1610, while observing the sky through his telescope, he could never have imagined that more than four centuries later, we would discover that this frozen world holds one of the largest water reservoirs in the entire solar system. Today, we know that beneath its icy crust, there may be a vast ocean, and with it, the possibility that Europa could harbor life. But if this place is so promising in the search for extraterrestrial life, why haven't we been able to send a crewed mission there yet? What makes Europa so difficult to reach? The answer lies in a long history of space exploration and technical challenges that we are still far from overcoming. It all began on March 2, 1972, when the Pioneer 10 probe was launched from Cape Canaveral. This mission was part of an ambitious NASA program that aimed to take advantage of a rare alignment of the outer planets to explore the gas giants of the solar system. Equipped with cutting-edge scientific instruments for its time, the probe's goal was to uncover the mysteries of these distant worlds, about which we knew very little. Boosted by a powerful Atlas Centaur rocket, Pioneer 10 accelerated for 17 minutes until it reached an impressive speed of 51,682 kilometers per hour. As it crossed the Van Allen radiation belts, its instruments began operating, and in just 90 minutes, it had already reached interplanetary space. 11 hours later, it was approaching the moon and became the fastest human-made object at that time. With that initial thrust and the advantage of planetary alignment, Pioneer 10 reached Jupiter's orbit on December 3, 1973, becoming the first spacecraft in history to explore this colossal planet. And it didn't stop there. It also passed by Europa, revealing a world far more complex than previously imagined. Two years later, Pioneer 11 followed its path and also approached Jupiter's moons, sending back higher resolution images. Both probes managed to cover the immense distance between Earth and Jupiter thanks to perfect timing and strong initial propulsion. These windows of opportunity occur roughly every 13 months when Earth and Jupiter are relatively aligned to ease the journey. However, back then, the data gathered still didn't suggest Europa's potential as one of the most fascinating places in the solar system. That only began to change with the arrival of the Voyager missions. The 1970s marked the beginning of a new era of discovery. After the success of the Pioneer probes, NASA continued with the Grand Tour program, which aimed to send spacecraft to visit all the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and at the time, Pluto. The original plan was overly ambitious and was canceled due to cost, around a billion dollars. In its place came the Voyager program. Unlike the Pioneers, the Voyager probes were equipped with much more advanced technologies. They carried more fuel, longer-lasting batteries, and high-precision scientific instruments. Launched on September 5, 1977, Voyager 1 would arrive at Jupiter in January 1979. Voyager 2, launched a bit earlier on August 20, 1977, would reach the planet in July of the same year. Even with the initial boost, the Voyager probes took longer than the pioneers to reach Jupiter. And the reason was simple. Wait. Every extra gram in a space mission directly affects travel time. The heavier the spacecraft, the more energy it takes to reach the same speed. But the effort paid off. The Voyagers were the first to capture truly clear images of Jupiter and also provided crucial information about Europa's composition and geological structure. Until then, very little was known about this moon, but the images revealed something unexpected. Its highly reflective surface suggested the presence of ice, which was later confirmed by further observations. Scientific curiosity grew, and Europa began to steal the spotlight. The original goal of the Pioneer and Voyager missions was simply to take advantage of the rare alignment between the gas giants to study them up close, and, using that momentum, launch the probes beyond the boundaries of the solar system. However, during these journeys, a new focus emerged. The data collected began to suggest that Europa wasn't just a frozen, inert moon. Its surface was surprisingly clean, without the scars from impacts we usually see on ancient celestial bodies. That caught scientists' attention. 
The only plausible explanation was that Europa had some form of geological activity that constantly renewed its crust. This type of phenomenon had never been observed on a moon before, making Europa a unique case. The suspicion was that beneath its icy shell, there was a liquid ocean, heated by internal forces, possibly from the friction caused by Jupiter's strong gravitational pull. Over time, new observations only increased the fascination. The Hubble Space Telescope detected massive jets of water being expelled near Europa's south pole, true cosmic geysers, similar to those on Enceladus, a moon of Saturn. It was the first time we clearly observed water being expelled into space from another celestial body in our solar system. From that moment on, the search for life beyond Earth had a new star. The scientific community began shifting its attention from Jupiter to its mysterious moon. After all, where there's water, there's hope, and the possibility of finding life forms. Even microscopic ones in a subterranean ocean protected by a thick layer of ice had never seemed more real. This growing excitement motivated NASA to launch a new, more modern mission to explore the giant planet and its moons. That's how the Juno probe was born, launched in August 2011 with a destination, Jupiter. It only arrived in July 2016. But why did it take so long, even with today's advanced technology? Once again, the answer lies in the probe's weight. As we've seen, the heavier a spacecraft is, the more fuel it needs to reach the necessary speed. However, that extra fuel also adds weight, which creates a challenging cycle for space engineers. While Pioneer 10 and 11 weighed around 258 kilograms, Voyager 1 and 2 each exceeded 700 kilograms. Juno, on the other hand, weighs an astonishing 3,625 kilograms, more than five times the weight of the Voyagers. Even with a more powerful launch, Juno's significant mass caused it to take five years to complete its trip to Jupiter. Now imagine what would happen with a crewed mission. A spacecraft capable of carrying humans to Europa would need to weigh at least 10 times more than Juno, considering life support systems, food, water, fuel, radiation protection, and scientific equipment. That means, with the most powerful rockets we have today, such a journey couldn't be completed in less than five years. And that's the most optimistic estimate. Some studies suggest that a crewed spacecraft, with dimensions three times larger than the Apollo spacecraft that took the first astronauts to the moon, would take about 8.5 years just to reach Jupiter. And if we consider the return trip, we'd be talking about a mission lasting at least 17 years. A journey of that length would require massive amounts of supplies, which would, in turn, make the spacecraft even heavier, and consequently, slower. It's a chain reaction. More supplies require more space and more weight, which requires more fuel, which adds even more weight, and so on. The math simply doesn't work in our favor when it comes to reaching Europa with a crewed mission. For now, it remains out of our technological reach. Still, scientists are already thinking of creative solutions to this problem. One of the most promising ideas for making a trip to Europa feasible in the future would be to create an interplanetary route with strategic stops, a kind of space highway, with refueling stations along the way. Imagine bases set up on the Moon, Mars, and Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt. With that setup, a spacecraft headed for Europa wouldn't need to carry all its fuel, water, and supplies from Earth. It could refuel at each of these stations, like a car stopping at gas stations during a long road trip. If this scenario became reality, the trip would be much lighter, literally. With less weight on board, the spacecraft could travel at much higher speeds, drastically reducing the travel time. Scientists estimate that with this kind of logistical and technological support, we could reach Europa in just 1.5 years. That's right, from over 8 years down to only 18 months. And the best part? The return would also be much faster. The crew could spend a few weeks exploring the Moon's icy surface and then follow the same route back, stopping at Ceres, Mars, and the Moon before returning to Earth. A mission that, in today's conditions, would take almost two decades could be completed in just three years. That would completely change our ability to explore distant worlds. But of course, we're still far from reaching that level of infrastructure. Right now, we don't have a single base outside of Earth, none in lunar orbit, let alone on Mars or Ceres. Building such facilities would require significant advancements in space exploration, engineering, and interplanetary logistics. And even if we succeed in building them, there's still another complicating factor, planetary alignment. For a journey between these bases to be fast and efficient, the Moon, Mars, Ceres, and Jupiter would need to be relatively aligned in space. And that doesn't happen very often. Even if the mission took advantage of that alignment to reach Europa, 
there would be no guarantees that the return could follow the same route. By the time astronauts finished exploring the Jovian moon, the planets would likely be in completely different positions. That would force the crew to wait for a new alignment, which could take years. So even in a highly optimistic scenario, with space stations at three different points in the solar system, we'd still have to deal with the challenge of planetary synchronization. In other words, it's not enough to have the technology. Timing also has to be on our side. In the end, exploring Europa with humans remains one of the greatest challenges of modern space exploration. The moon that hides oceans beneath its ice is still out of our direct reach. Even so, the fascination with this frozen world only grows. After all, the possibility of finding life, even microscopic, in such a distant place reminds us that the universe may hold secrets far deeper than we can imagine. Perhaps future generations equipped with technologies that today still seem like science fiction will be able to turn this dream into reality. Until then, we'll keep following each advance, each probe launched, each image captured. Because even if we can't set foot on Europa yet, we've already taken the first steps toward it.